Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and today we're going to add detail to die cuts. We're going to play with the Wildflower Clippings dies which is just full of different flowers and greenery. I am actually quite surprised with how many different pieces of greenery there are in this die set. And I'm going to call, take each of these dies and cut them out of several different colors of cardstock. And I'm going to use Copic markers that are slightly darker than the cardstock that we're using to add some shading and some detail to the die cuts because I like them to have a little more dimension. And this actually is a pretty easy way to do it. I'm not being particularly careful with how I'm applying it, just kind of slapping it on there. And since this is greenery and flowers and very organic, you can be quite uh, sloppy. <laughs> yes, sloppy. <laughs> you don't have to be terribly careful to get a beautiful look. In fact, being super precise is not going to be your friend. Being a little free-handed with it is going to add to that organic feel. And will make each piece different and special. Here are the three different colors that I used, um, both in Copic colors and in cardstock colors. Now I had also taken several colors of cardstock and die cut a bunch of the flower pieces. And I'm going to add details to those also. Just using a slightly darker marker and I'm just using some flicking motions. from For the circular flowers I'm going from the center outward. And for the tulip type shaped um, I'm going from the bottom up again in a flicking motion. And here you can see six different colors of cardstock with a pile of different flowers. And we have three different colors of greens here for the greenery. Now I'm going to take this another step further. It wasn't enough. I needed some splatter. So we're going to use the, what is this called? Shimmer Rainbow Sampler. These are all watercolors with shimmer and I'm adding a little water to those, stirring it up, and then I am using these watercolors to spatter onto our flowers. I don't think I did it on the greenery, just the flowers. And there isn't a teal on this palette, so I'm using the white and on the yellow, and I've got one darker yellow cardstock and a, a light colored yellow and I'm going to spatter the yellow on there. The wonderful thing about this watercolor sampler is that there it's a full rainbow of colors. So you can use this on whatever cardstock you've got. It'll there will be a matching color to some extent for every color that you want to spatter it on or paint on it. You can mix these to create your own custom colors too. And you can see on the corner of the uh, screen here that I've got a white, cheap white uh, watercolor palette or paint palette there. And I have in the past taken the reconstituted or uh, watercolors and added them to that palette. And you can keep using that. Let it dry out and you can let it and you can reconstitute it or reactivate it with water later. I'm almost done adding spatters to all of the flowers. And now I want to create an inked background. We've got Spun Sugar, Kitsch Flamingo, Dusty Concord, and Blueprint Sketch, all in the Distress inks, not the Oxide, the original formula. And I'm ink blending these. I'm using the uh, sponge applicators because I want to uh, apply a heavy um, ink blending of these. Now I did discover that I need to re-ink my, <laughs> my ink pads for a few of these colors here. So it was a little bit of a, a job to get those blended. And the Distress inks don't ink blend, ink 
blend as easily as the oxides. I did spatter some water on there to get some water marks and use, use some pearl water, pearlized water to get some more shimmer and uh, blendedness. Now I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock. This is 110 pound car white cardstock and you can see that I'm using the um, slimline dainty scallop edged dies here. Now there are two dies that I've taped together to create this frame. I love that it's got this lace edge and two borders of stitching to create this frame and it's so easy to use. Now to create the background for this I took a slimline modern embossed panel die and this is I think it's the largest one. Yeah and die cut that just because it fits perfectly behind the frame we just created. Now I'm pulling out the Big and Bold Sentiments stamp set which is designed specifically for slimline cards and I'm going to use the uh, frame here to help center this where I want it on the card. I am going to have a line of greenery underneath the word so I need it to be just a little higher than center on this panel. I did use that um, alignment tool for the misty to get the sentiment straight especially since I had at some earlier point cut those two words apart because I wanted to layer them differently but you just line them back up together. Um, I used my what do you call it anti-static powder tool to get that prepped to do some embossing and I'm using the juicy ink from ink on three. I did stamp it uh, two or three times on that panel to get a good solid inking because this is such a bold image. I'm using some gold embossing powder here and I'm going to heat set that and it does turn into this beautiful solid uh, happy birthday sentiment. Now we're going to start assembling things. We're going to take that dainty scallop edge frame and we're going to adhere that to the panel that we've ink blended and embossed and die cut and I'm just going to line that up so that it is uh, well centered. You can see just a tiny smidge of an edge of that behind the scallops. Now we're going to adhere that to the slimline card base. I did add some coaster blank behind that to add a little dimension both to the frame and the background. And now we're going to take some of these greenery pieces and we're going to add them to the card. I'm going to fuss with that placement until I like it and then I'm going to come back and pick each piece up and glue it down with some of the Barely Art Precision Glue. It does not take a whole lot and the way these are designed you can just add a little dab of glue behind each leaf to get them adhered down or at only as many edges or leaves as you want. I really like how these stand out against that ink blended background and how they play so well together. The stems are thin enough that you can bend them and create uh, different arches with them. It's uh, far more flexible than some of the greenery pieces I've worked with you can make these go in any direction you need them to go. So it's a little less difficult to form, say if you wanted to do a wreath or uh, follow the shape of a die cut. I'm also going to take some liquid pixie dust and I'm going to dilute it just a smidge and I'm going to add it to the leaves. I just want a little extra shimmer. The whole feel of this card to me is a twilight summer, I, which is perfect for right now. With that lovely sunset or twilight background, just glowing. <clears throat> now we're going to use some bubble bath uh, bobbles. 
and we're going to use our Trinity tray here to help us separate those out. <clears throat> and I'm going to add these scattered into the greenery. They kind of look like fireflies to me. They just have that beautiful iridescent reflective quality to them. And then just really finish this card off perfectly. Inside the card, we're going to add just a couple more pieces of greenery that are in the stash and that will finish off this card. Next, yes, I did three cards. I know I can be a bit of a overachiever here. I am going to do a five by seven card and we're going to use the dainty scallop edge again. We're going to use that third piece of that die and it is long enough to do a border for a five by seven card. So I cut this um, in modern embossed panel with the, I think it was the third from largest size, uh, modern embossed A7 panel. And now I'm spattering the heck out of it with some of this shimmer watercolor rainbow. <clears throat> and I'm using what's in that palette already, except for the white or pearly color. Looks like a hot mess. Just wait, you'll see, it'll turn out beautifully. I lined up the border that I cut, which is probably close to six and three quarters inches long. And I am going to use the happy birthday sentiment again, just because that's the sentiment I need the most. There are several great sentiments in that big and bold sentiment stamp set. You take your pick, me, I'm using the happy birthday card, the happy birthday sentiment. <clears throat> and now this is my first time using the strawberry champagne embossing powder from Ink on 3. It's perfect for this card. It's got that pinkish quality to it, um, which goes with the soft feel of this card, which I'm using a whole pile of those flowers. As you saw maybe a little bit earlier, I used some press and seal to keep all of those flowers lined up the way that I figured out I wanted them to lay on the card. I added a little coaster blank behind that panel and glued it to a five by seven card base. And now I'm at taking all those flowers on the press and seal strip, adding a little adhesive to that, um, more of the Barely Art Precision Glue. And I'm going to put this just below the center of the card and I'm going to glue that down. Now when you use the press and seal, not all of those layers are necessarily glued to each other. So you have to be careful when you remove those and then you just go back and add some glue behind the pieces that were not glued in the first round. Sometimes you just need to add a little bit in the in the layers. <clears throat> I'm going to take that lightest green greenery, which I didn't use on the first card, and I'm going to add those at the above the row of flowers. I think this just adds the perfect touch to all of these die cuts, and I really like the way the Copic coloring turned out on those lighter green leaves. And I'm going to just tuck those into that row of flowers, adding some extra detail and pizzazz to this card. Um, the pastel flowers just needed that pop of green, even if it was pastel green. It just ring, really brings some balance to the card. Now we're going to add the last little tiny flower, um, which the pick what is it called? The picket stick? Pick and pick up stick? Yes, the pick up stick is helpful with the pokey end to help get that secured down with the glue. I had add, added some coaster ink to the back of this panel also, the happy birthday panel. And I love how it looks so lacy on there. We are going to use some Morganite Muse this is one of the new colors of gems that came out in June. And I'm going to toss those about 
on the flowers and in the greenery to add some sparkle and shimmer. I don't know if, if I've created a card lately without some gems or baubles. We have them. We may as well use them. I love how they add some detail to this. Now we're going to use one of the stems that's specifically to go on a flower and they fit perfectly on the tulip shaped uh, flowers. And we're going to add that to the inside of the card and a couple of those little tiny five petal flowers. They just snug right in by those leaves. I really like how that um, adds some detail to the inside. And there's plenty of room to write a message or have a bazillion people sign it like will happen for me because I bring these to work. <laughs> <clears throat> for my last card, we're going to do a mini slimline. And I pulled out the slimline quilted cover die and die cut that from a heavyweight card, white cardstock. And now I'm going to cut a smaller portion with this modern embossed mini slimline set. It has this set or this um, piece that cuts out three circles and I thought I had it centered but you know what I didn't it was just to the right it's a little higher and with that quilted cover die there is a coordinating stencil set it is um, I think it's the trio trio I'll have it linked in the description box below I chose to use the hearts and I wanted to do my card the other direction. However, this is the way it lined up best. I am also adding the hearts to the inside of the card. And I just added the pink hearts with whatever pink was on my, my uh, blender brush. And it turned out pretty good, I have to say. Now I'm going to use the Supporting Script Sentiments stamp to add a sentiment to this card and I just wanted something very generic. Happy thoughts will work for any occasion, just about. I suppose not sympathy, but just about any other occasion. I'm going to use VersaFine Onyx Black to add that sentiment to the bottom of this panel, which again, perfect that I didn't quite center it because now that sentiment fit on there perfectly. I did add some coaster blank pieces to the back of that because we're going to need a little extra space to be tucking all of our little stems and flowers into this. So I've glued this to a six, three by six mini slimline card base, also in white. And now I'm going to take all of these pieces of greenery and these flowers, which I did three tulips here with the same method that I did that last piece that I stuck in the previous card and I'm adding these to these circles so that it looks like these tulips are growing through the quilted cover plate die into the opening. They're just coming right on through, bursting through with their botanical beauty. <laughs> I do add two to the center one because the center image should have just a little more pizzazz. And just gonna continue to tuck these in. Now I did mean for that purple one to lean a little more to the outer edge, but uh, you're gonna see that I'm trying to lift that up. That glue is so strong, it is not letting up. So it's gonna stay where it's at. <laughs> Sometimes when you're assembling things from a different direction than the way you actually laid them out. You don't get it exactly where you meant to, but no one's gonna know that but me. We're gonna add that last tulip to this uh, circle. And then we're going to add, oh, what are we gonna add? Oh, we're gonna add a little tiny leaf set or branch and a yellow five petal flower on the inside. I can't believe I still have a bunch of flowers and greenery left after all of these cards that I created. 
I was only going to make one card, but I ended up with so much extra. I needed to make more. So this one, we're going to use the Andesine Aura, which is the lightest pink of the Rainbow of Gems. Have you checked out that Rainbow of Gems that came out in June? It's pretty awesome. I had to have every single color, and I think I've used every single color several times. I'm adding several of those in the little circle, and that finishes the last card. I hope you enjoyed these. Which one did you like the best? Do you have a favorite card size? I clearly love the 5x7s the most. And the slim lines are so much fun. Have you gotten those gems? Is there a color that you'd like to see me use that you haven't seen me use? Let me know in that comment box below. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, take a moment to do that now. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.